After collecting your patient's family health history, it can be used to further investigate and identify health-related risks. Red flags in the family history are pieces of information that suggest a genetic etiology or cause of a health condition. A red flag can be a patient simply mentioning two or more family members with the same or related conditions. Related conditions like instances of bone cancer and brain cancer in one family may point toward a common genetic cause that can have multiple presentations. For instance, a patient with lee fraumeni syndrome, an autosomal dominant condition caused by variants in the TP53 gene, can have increased risk for cancers of various types, including osteosarcoma, soft tissue sarcoma, or brain or breast cancer. So any trend of related conditions like multiple family members having any of these cancers, even if not the same cancer, is a red flag and may mean a higher risk of having lee fraumeni syndrome. Other red flags in a family that can indicate a genetic cause include early age of onset for conditions that are typically late onset, like a stroke or heart attack in a younger person, a bilateral condition, like breast cancer that develops in both breasts independently and not as a metastasis, or retinoblastoma that affects both eyes, a severe cancer presentation, such as ovarian cancer that is diagnosed young and at a late stage, a rare condition or condition that's usually genetic, like early onset dementia or neurofibromatosis, a unique combination of findings, like a facial or limb difference combined with a developmental delay, and pregnancy difficulties like infertility, multiple miscarriages, or stillbirths. Since family history is particularly useful in discovering potential genetic links, it's important to have an accurate biological family history. Any non-biologically linked family member will not affect the risk outcome for the patient. So before using the family history in your patient's care, clarify any known adoptions, assisted reproduction that included donor eggs, sperm, or embryos, and sibling relationships, whether full, half, or step. When red flags are identified in a family history, it's important to talk through any concerns the patient has about their history and potential risks associated with the red flags. It can be reassuring to a patient to hear that family history doesn't guarantee they will develop the same or a related condition, even if their family history puts them at a higher risk. A common example of this is Alzheimer's disease. Patients often worry about this condition when it's in their family, but many find reassurances in being able to discuss it and learn that there are factors outside of genetics that influence the risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. A red flag in the family can also be an opportunity to talk about the importance of lifestyle and environment and how they impact health risks and the benefits of early screening for some health conditions. An example of this is type 2 diabetes and heart disease in the family. In addition to ruling out monogenic causes, individuals with this family history can be given guidance on how to lower their own chances by taking steps to maintain a nutritious diet, exercise regularly, and start regular screenings, such as blood pressure monitoring, lipid panels, blood glucose testing, or hemoglobin A1C checks. Family history can also guide recommendations around genetic testing. Genetic tests can identify variants that run in families and can explain the cause of the health condition in family members. It's helpful to ask if your patient or one of their family members has already had genetic testing, whether at home or in the clinic. A patient whose family has had a genetic test might already be aware of the genetic variant associated with the condition in their family. When discussing genetic testing with patients, there are a few things to keep in mind. First, explain there are many different types of genetic tests and each one has its uses and limitations. A direct-to-consumer, abbreviated DTC, genetic test is often limited in the number of genetic variants tested, so someone whose DTC test is negative could still have a variant not covered by the test and may require additional clinical genetic testing. Likewise, clinical genetic tests can be limited to testing for variants in one or a few genes or can be more comprehensive and include sequencing a whole panel of related genes or, in some cases, sequencing a patient's entire genome. These more comprehensive tests sometimes yield results whose clinical meaning is unclear and may cause uncertainty and anxiety for the patient. Secondly, genetic tests can lead to discovering unexpected biological relationships either discovering new family members or finding out family members are not biologically related to your patient in the way they previously thought. 
Unexpected findings as a consequence of genetic testing can be upsetting to patients and additional resources may be required to help support them. When unexpected findings happen, remember to update the family history so it accurately reflects your patient's biological relationships and genetic risks. Some providers prefer to refer patients to a genetic specialist for review of their family history and for further discussion about genetic testing options. If you identify one or more red flags and feel the questions raised in the family history are outside your expertise, consider referring to a specialist who cares for patients in that area, such as a cardiologist for heart conditions, oncologist for cancers, or ophthalmologist for eye conditions. Keeping in mind that having only one or two relatives with a common condition at typical ages of onset without a red flag is likely not a reason for specialty referral or additional screening. For more complicated family histories or questions about more rare genetic conditions, it's best to refer your patient to a clinical genetics professional, such as a genetic counselor or clinical geneticist, who can assess the risk and discuss the need for more specific genetic and clinical tests. Many patients benefit from a referral for genetic counseling to further explore their family health history, to have risks to other family members explained, to learn about the options for genetic testing, and for supportive counseling needs. Whenever possible, enter the family health history into the electronic health record. This can be a cue to monitor or screen for any signs or symptoms similar to the conditions that a patient's family members have had, and it gives other providers access to family history information to use in the care of the patient. Now, as a quick recap, looking for red flags in a patient's family health history helps identify potential genetic risk factors. When red flags are found, further discussions with patients about their meaning can be helpful and may inform lifestyle modifications and earlier and more frequent health screening and monitoring. The presence of one or more red flags in a family can lead to discussions with patients about genetic risks, genetic testing options, and to referrals to specialty providers such as cardiologists, oncologists, ophthalmologists, clinical geneticists, and genetic counselors.